Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my video comparison of the late 2015 versus the mid-2017 5K IMAX for video editors. I've been using these machines for about two weeks now, and I'm using the latest version of Mac OS Sierra and the latest versions of Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. So we are using DaVinci Resolve 14, which has some good speed improvements compared to the previous version. Now, a lot of you guys have probably seen my previous videos comparing iMacs, Mac Pros, MacBooks, Hackintoshes, Ryzen builds, and those were using some similar project files, uh, but I would not compare those results to these ones because there are operating system differences and improvements, and then obviously the software has been improved as well. So I just compared these two machines here. Before we get into benchmarks, temperature tests, and video editing results, I want to mention the specs of these machines. Both machines have i7 processors, the best graphics cards that are offered, 32 gigs of RAM, and PCI SSDs. If you guys want to see the exact specs, you guys could check out the links in the video description below. If you guys buy through those links, that helps support me to make more videos like this one, so I definitely appreciate it. Now I also want to point out if you guys buy through B&H, they actually have some deals on there, better deals than on Apple, and they don't charge taxes in 48 out of the 50 states, so that definitely helps save you guys some money, and once again, it helps support what we do here. Now one interesting thing to mention is that not only did Apple give us a faster CPU, desktop grade much faster graphics, faster RAM, and faster SSDs, they also lower the price by $300. Even more interesting than that is the graphics card that comes with the base uh, model of the 5K 2017 iMac is actually faster than the best graphics in uh, the last year's late 2015 model, which you guys see here that I have. So major improvements, and if you were thinking about buying a 5K iMac, right now is really a great time to buy it because you can even get one that costs 400 bucks less and still get better graphical performance. This guy, like I said, has a desktop graphics chip, and I've even been playing some games. Battlefield 1, 1440p ultra graphics, above 60 FPS. Uh, it actually is a fantastic machine. This is the first time I could say that you can game on iMac, and it will do well. If you guys want to save some money, and I'm talking up to $1,000 on RAM, you should buy the 8GB model and install the extra RAM yourself. Apple charges a crazy amount for their RAM, so you should buy the 8GB model, buy extra RAM from Amazon. I'll link the exact RAM that I bought for this iMac that's behind me right here, and install it yourself. It doesn't void your warranty. It only takes about two minutes. I'll link to an instructional guide on how to install it, and I just highly recommend that. Don't get ripped off by Apple. This is the way they make a ton of profit at doing this. So check out the video, check out the link to the RAM I bought and save yourself some cash. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start looking into some performance. Before getting into the numbers, I want to mention that the KB Lake processor has a 200 megahertz uh, base clock increase in a 300 megahertz boost clock increase. But what's even more interesting than that is actual numbers while you have the CPU under full load. Uh, because these guys do get quite hot, uh, the CPU actually runs at about four to 500 megahertz faster on the 2017 model because it does stay cooler. Now, both of them do actually clock lower than the max boost frequency because they do get quite hot. Uh, this is under like full transcoding 100% CPU usage. So this isn't all the time because usually when you're video editing, you're not maxing out your CPU for you know long periods of time consistently. So they will get hot, they will get loud, but the new one does fare better in this way. Let's take a look at Cinebench R15, which is very popular. Here, the CPU score is 8% higher on the new model and graphics, we have 22% faster performance. Next, let's take a look at Geekbench 4, which is also very popular. Here, single core CPU gets 9% faster performance and multi-core gets 16% faster. That is respectable. These numbers don't sound like a lot, but Intel really hasn't done uh, much of improvements over the last few CPU upgrades. They really single digit improvements. So I'm glad to see almost 20,000 on the multi-core score, which is beating out like a six core processor in their Mac Pros. Uh, if we're gonna take a look at OpenCL, so this is already graphics. We have 36% higher score. Taking a look at Metal, which is Apple's version of OpenCL, it's supposed to be better. We have 35% improvement. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about gaming, but I did run Unigen Heaven, and we got 52% higher score with the new Mac. What's even more interesting than that is the temperatures. Not only did the Mac stay a lot cooler, averaging about 76 degrees Celsius after three runs, uh, the fans were also uh, much quieter, about 1700 RPMs, compared to the 5K iMac, which stabilized at about 92 Celsius, and the fans were running at 2400. So that really shows how much more efficient this 
new graphics card is in this iMac. And if you're really pushing your machine to the limit, either graphics or CPU or uh, both at the same time, you're gonna notice that and it's gonna run quicker. Finally, let's get into video editing, and I'm gonna start with Bruce X, which is a Final Cut benchmark. People use this benchmark to compare the performance of Final Cut between different Mac models. If you've tested your Mac previously, I would suggest do it again running Sierra because the numbers did change. So don't base other numbers with these tests you guys see here. Now the older iMac took 27 seconds to render, the new one took 15 and a half seconds, which is 75% faster. Now to give you guys a reference point, my previous Mac Pro that I paid $5,000 for, which had a six core processor and two D700, the best graphics cards that they had available for it, takes 24 seconds running High Sierra and the latest version of Final Cut. So this new iMac is basically a beast in Final Cut. Let's start looking at some project files. We're gonna be looking at Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and Resolve all at the same time per specific project file. And you guys are gonna see the results of each machine. That way you guys can compare the performance of each machine with each uh, editing program to see uh, how the editing programs compare, how the machines compare, and to see if it's worth upgrading for you. Let's start off with stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. This is something that I do often because I love my shots to be perfectly smooth. Here in Final Cut, we see an improvement of 80% with the new iMac only taking eight seconds. Yes, that is correct. Eight seconds to stabilize this 20 second 4K clip. Premiere Pro, we see only 15% improvement. And of course it takes four minutes and 20 seconds to do. Premiere Pro uses almost no CPU power, almost no GPU power. They really need to fix this. It's been like this for four or five years now. It's really ridiculous. Resolve, we see a faster time, but only about a 6% improvement. Resolve also doesn't use much CPU or GPU power compared to Final Cut, which literally like almost maxes out the CPU and GPU and gets it done in literally eight seconds. Now let's take a look at a five minute 1080p project. This is footage from an A7S II. We have two LUTs and film grain applied and we have background rendering turned off in Final Cut. So with these programs, they have to render this out and then export it. So here we see a 67% improvement in Final Cut, 11% improvement in Premiere Pro and 42% improvement in Resolve. Going forward, you guys are gonna notice like a common theme here. Next, let's take a look at a similar project, but in 4K, five minutes long with two LUTs and film grain applied. In the final cut, we get 45% faster speeds, 12% faster in Premiere Pro, and 52% faster in DaVinci Resolve. This last test is the most difficult, but it's only 20 seconds long. It's actually four 20 second 4K clips scaled side by side into a 4K project, each with two LUTs and film grain applied, two of those clips being reversed. So this is a huge load on the GPU and the CPU. Let's see what happens. With Final Cut, we get a 45% faster result. In Premiere Pro, we get 14% improvement. In DaVinci Resolve, we see 235% faster rendering. Now, I had to do this multiple times. Uh, this is just shocking how fast it pulled through this. The last version of DaVinci Resolve 12.5 took about 10 minutes on similar hardware to do this. And now we're looking at 38 seconds. So DaVinci uh, the Resolve has been updated. It works so much faster and it's taking massive use of this new graphics card rendering this out. So this isn't like Apple numbers. I wanna make sure you guys understand this. It's not like, uh, Apple inflates if it's 30% better, they say 130%. This is legitimately 235% faster. Rendering performance is very helpful, but it doesn't paint a full picture of your video editing experience because a lot of times you're importing footage, you're uh, scrubbing through, you're playing back, or you're waiting to render before you can play back and see uh, what your footage looks like. Uh, so I took a look at timeline smoothness. This is a 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied, the one we used previously for the test. The 2015 iMac was able to play one LUT and film grain at full resolution. This is better quality, uh, full resolution 4K, and uh, play it smoothly without any rendering needed. With the new iMac, we're able to do the same thing, but three LUTs applied. Not only did it do the two LUTs, it actually did three. So that's a major improvement there. In Premiere Pro at full resolution, the previous iMac was able to pull off one LUT and film grain and not drop any frames. The new one can still only do one LUT and film grain. It gets close to doing two, but it does drop some frames. Of course, you can drop your resolution down to uh, one half or one quarter and get much better playback when then both of them 
machines do equally well. Uh, and on Final Cut, you can drop down to uh, better performance instead of better quality and get a softer image, but it'll play back. With DaVinci Resolve, it really got interesting. The previous iMac was also able to do one LUT and film grain without dropping any frames, and this is a 4K timeline. The new machine was able to do six LUTs and film grain without dropping any frames perfectly smooth. I was in disbelief. I tested this multiple times to make sure, and it is going extremely fast. I was honestly shocked. Uh, it, they really just figured out how to make use of these new AMD graphics chips, and it's amazing. So if you're editing on a previous iMac and you're color grading and you're not happy with the performance, this thing is insane. I wanted to test this further, something I haven't tested in the past. I took that project with four 4K files, uh, super sampled into a 4K project, each one with two LUTs and film grain applied with two of those reverse. This is insane on your graphics card. Um, so previously, uh, with the old iMac, Resolve was able to do about nine frames per second. It's unplayable. The new one, it didn't, it didn't do it perfectly, but it jumped between 28 to 30 frames per second and almost pulled it off. Premiere Pro won't even play this. Uh, Final Cut, the previous version wouldn't play. It was better than Premiere Pro. It was just super choppy. Uh, the new iMac with uh, Final Cut, it's also really choppy, better, but unplayable. And this new one just eats through it. So after weeks of using these machines and spending multiple days and countless hours testing and retesting and formulating all this, uh, hit that thumbs up button if you guys appreciate it, by the way. What is my conclusion? Well, if you're looking between buying a 15 and a 17 iMac, there's no doubt about it, go with the 2017. I know you can get the refurbished 2015 model or you can buy one at a discount from B&H for a good price. It still isn't worth it. The new model got a $300 price drop if you're comparing the same exact specs. So that helps you get into it at a lower cost. And of course it has a faster and cooler processor, faster and much cooler running graphics card, uh, faster RAM, faster storage. Uh, even if you're do using Premiere Pro where we didn't see too much gains, I think it's still worth it. Now, on the other hand, if you have a 2014 or a 2015 5K iMac, is it worth upgrading? Well, if you're using Premiere Pro, I would say no, at least not yet. Uh, Adobe keeps adding new features, but they're not optimizing their software. That's why I left Adobe Premiere Pro after using it for multiple years, switched over to Final Cut because the optimizations were terrible. I switched over to 4K and the editing experience was horrible. Now, if you use Final Cut and you make a living video editing, I think it's definitely worth selling your previous iMac and buying the new model. Um, the new model comes in less and iMacs hold their value really, really well. And you're getting between 45 to 80% speed improvement, which is massive, especially if you're having performance issues with the previous models, you're gonna get a really big improvement. And lastly, if you edit with DaVinci Resolve, you should hands down have your old iMac on Craigslist already, sell it, spend a few hundred dollars, and get a much faster video editing experience, especially if you're doing color grading, which you probably are if you're using DaVinci Resolve. This thing is so much faster, so much smoother. It's better in every single way. Once again, I'm gonna have links to iMacs down in the video description, and I'm not just saying that so you can you guys can buy one, but if you're gonna buy one, if you guys appreciate all the time and effort that it takes and money to do stuff like this, um, I definitely appreciate it. It doesn't cost you guys any extra. You guys can save some money on taxes at B&H and they actually have lower prices and free shipping, stuff like that. So I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Once again, do not waste your money buying Apple RAM. It's extremely overpriced. I'll have a link to the 32 gig RAM kit that I uh, bought on Amazon. It works perfect. It doesn't void your warranty. I'll have a link uh, where you guys can see how to install it. It only takes about two minutes and you guys can put up to 64 gigs. In this machine, I had um, just a standard set in mine. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more like it, hit subscribe and hit that notification so you guys don't miss out on any videos. I will have the iMac Pro as soon as that comes out in the fall to compare. Of course, these videos take a ton of time. They get really annoying doing all these tests and redoing it, but I love seeing your guys' comments and how much it helps you guys and you guys uh, enjoy the video. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.